first time video. So you get to see my old ugly face in person. All right, what to say here? Looking at this thing, I feel like a freshly fucked moron. So I can appreciate you folks that do this on a regular basis. All right, well, this will be my breaking cherry for those female viewers out there that are offended by that. Well, apparently you were there before me. So with that caveat, onward, upward, and forward. This is going to be about a subject I've exchanged a lot of bullshit with various people on. Plutocracy versus democracy, all right? Well, obviously you can't have one and the other. They're like oil and water. It's like shit and water, okay? They just don't go together. They're just not compatible. You can't consume both at the same time. And historically in this country, in the United States, which is where I'm videoing, it's been a continual struggle between plutocracy and democracy. Both exist side by side, both struggle against each other. For the last century and a half, democracy seems to be winning, but for the last 30 years or so, precisely in the era of Reaganomics, plutocracy has been getting the upper hand. For the last 10 years, it's, democracy has been pretty much flat on its back. Not out for the count, just kind of down there, okay? So, to reinforce my point, I'm going to quote an article from Francis Fukuyama, famous Harvard political commentator, social commentator. No, not fuck your mama. That's a different video. We'll get into that later. He says, and I quote, Scandalous as it may sound to the ears of Republican school in Reaganomics, one critical measure of the health of modern democracy is its ability to legitimately extract taxes from its own elites. The most dysfunctional societies in the developing world are those whose elites succeed either in legally exempting themselves from taxation or in taking advantage of tax enforcement to evade them, thereby shifting the burden of public expenditure onto the rest of society. In other words, with all the tax breaks, tax loopholes, and the latest cut, you rich motherfuckers are about to break the bank. You're going to destroy the economy, or at least you'll send it into a spin to where it begins to resemble Mexico, Russia, all the places you laugh at, but which you are turning this country into with your tax policy and with your trickle-down economics. A YouTube user by the name of Bullshit Man, Anti-Bullshit Man, has done an empirical study on this, put up all sorts of charts and graphs and things, all that good stuff, which, of course, you blow off. But he's empirically proved that the economy is going into the shitter, and you're shitting into the well. And at the present rate, it's just simply going to bottom out. And when it does that, it's going to destroy the political culture in the United States. You're going to drag it right along with it. What historically has been the result of that? Well, historically, fascism was one result. Military dictatorship is in Chile. If that's a bit extreme, then what will happen is it'll just fart along to where it does resemble a semi-authoritarian country like Mexico, like Argentina, like Russia, like Taiwan, Republic of Korea, where whatever democracy or freedom that does exist is gradually whittled away. You're seeing that now, along with all of the Reaganomics has come tighter controls over civil liberties, homeland security. And as you ratchet up your military industrial complex being paid for with deficit taxation, one bullshit war after another, it's only a matter of time before not only the economic system collapses, but you have to resort to increasing authoritarianism in order to keep the, same, the, the shit glued together. Okay. So, that may be a worst case scenario, but basically speaking, the political culture of the United States with its constitutional freedoms, its civil rights, liberties, all this is in grave jeopardy the longer this economic bullshit continues. You're running, this, you're running the economy on deficit. It can't continue for, the, for another 10 years. I give it another decade before it actually does begin to resemble all these places around the world 
that are in permanent recession. And with that caveat, I'll close this off. This video may suck. The content does not. The ideas behind it do not. It's something that you're going to have a hard time refuting in any comments you may care to leave.